Well, good evening. Um, as mentioned, I'm Todd Skiles. I'm coming to you from beautiful Camp T. Brady Saunders, where I am teaching sailing to a bunch of American Heritage girls. So I'm going to try to whip through this as fast as possible because we've got some big storms coming through. Um, so the, the truth of the matter is, three years ago, we were on the verge of failure, and we had actually voted at one point to close the ship. And so the, the question became, how did we get from a failed unit to flagship in three years? And so <clears throat> we've got to cover three years of history in 10 minutes and 10 bullet points. So I'm going to recommend that you buckle up and hang on. So these 10 points are uh, program, program, program. You got to go out there and do stuff. Um, picking the right adults because the wrong adults can break it. Um, your community service. We're going to talk about that and how to integrate that. We're talking about your duty to God, religious emblems, things like that. Your youth leadership continuum and, and the pendulum that swings on that. Your training program, not just for adults, but for youth. How to be a BSA citizen. And this is actually very, very important. I think we do this not so well in certain councils. We're going to talk about your publicity program. Um, your perseverance plan. This is actually probably one of the most critical things if we don't plan for it. And number 10, everybody's least favorite subject, money. So with that, let's go to the next slide. Um, program. Number one, most important thing, and this seems almost so obvious, but get out on the water. At least once or twice a month, you've got to be out there on the water. Um, and don't be overwhelmed by everything that we can do in this program. I do believe that Sea Scouts is to some extent the pinnacle of BSA because we can do it all. Um, we can do everything that everybody else did, plus all of our specialty programs. Don't feel like you have to go to Coke Cup your first year. Get out there, get on some boats, and master some program, and give those kids some early successes uh, so they can go home and tell those stories. Avoid the knot trap. You heard somebody mention it earlier. I won't belabor the point. Knots serve the program. They are not the program in and of itself. They allow us to tie our boats up so they don't float away. But the truth is, knots are boring. So don't get hung up on those and don't get hung up on our uniforms. An early unit does not want to spend their money on a bunch of dress uniforms. And honestly, most kids don't care what their adults look like. So go out, focus on just maybe some NCUs, tie nice some Fruit of Loom shirts in your driveway. Keep it cheap, keep it simple, keep it fun, and focus on what gets kids out on the water. Uh, those of you who are in the, the northern states, if you're in northeast region, sometimes you do things just because it's cool. We lock our boats up for most of winter because it's just freaking cold here. Um, so go out, do trampoline dodgeball, do an escape room, um, do all sorts of things. You get on Groupon and, and get good ideas of things you can do that can build community and build friendship within your ship, even when you can't go sailing. Um, it doesn't have to be on a boat. Remember, scouting is part of sea scouting. And lastly, get your long cruise. Within the first two years, please get your long cruise. Don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. Um, you can call up local councils. You can go to sea base. But it's nothing wrong with letting somebody else plan and organize your first long cruise for you. That's part of the EDGE method. Explain, demonstrate, guide, and enable, which we'll go over here in a moment. Next slide. Um, picking the right adults. Number one, this is the biggest thing you have to look at is, are they good with kids? I have said this so many times. It is easier to teach a good scouter how to sail than a good sailor how to scout. You want somebody who understands teenagers because the truth is a boat, for the most part, will do what you tell it to do. Teenagers? Not so much. So within that, there's two types of adults we've identified that cause our big problems. Number one are these, these are called the poison pills. These are the barking adults. They've got all the answers, they yell at the kids, they don't understand youth leadership, and they have to correct everybody. You've gotta get those people out of your ship. You've gotta be able to go to that adult and say, you, over there, out of the way. On the flip side are the jellyfish. They don't actually do anything. They just stand around and complain. Both of these, poison pills and jellyfish, are going to bring a negative attitude. We've got to remember, Scout is cheerful, and we've got to focus on the positive. So you want people who are doers, but you want people who are positive doers. Number four, must be present to win. 
you cannot be a skipper if you cannot come to meetings. And I've seen this, skippers who's like, yeah, I'll be a skipper, but they don't actually show up. It's about the relationship. And part of that is also be clear on your chain of command. Teenagers don't like being given multiple conflicting orders from multiple conflicting adults. Skippers and, and bosuns, they're like Highlander. There can be only one. So you've got to make sure that your adults know that they cannot go around the skipper or the bosun to start telling kids what to do. There can only be one set of instructions. And lastly, smile and own your mistakes because you are teaching these kids how to pick themselves up when something goes wrong. And if something does not go wrong, you're not trying hard enough. You will run aground, you will drop an anchor, you will break something, smile, say ta-da, rate yourself, I don't know, do something Olympic, um, but help those kids understand that strength comes from humility. Next slide. Um, community service, I'm, I don't want to overemphasize this, but it is important because we're not always that good about it, but don't neglect it. Find a charity, build a relationship, make it part of your regular monthly program. Tell folks, listen, we're going to go out the fourth Thursday of every month and we're going to meet at the food bank and sort food. And thank your charity because as you begin these regular meetings, you're building a relationship and they're doing as much for you and your program as you are doing for their program as well. So focus on the community service, make it part of it, track it, put in your JTE numbers. Next slide. Um, number four, duty to God. Um, you know, don't hide from faith. There are a lot of good families for whom their faith is a very important part of who they are as a family. And some of these people are very hard workers. And remember that we have a duty to God and that a scout is reverent um, and that diversity comes in all forms. Um, but focus on what unites and not what divides. Lord knows we've had some interesting few years in BSA as we get tossed about by the societal changes that are going on around us. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter if you're a liberal or conservative. Everybody likes boats and everybody believes in helping the poor. So focus on that, because we're not trying to change the world, we're just trying to change some kids. And know how to support your religious emblems program, because this is important for kids, um, not just from a faith development, but the truth is that kids like Blink. It is not your job to facilitate their religious emblem. It is your job to help them understand how the process works. And the process is pretty much the same, four easy steps. Get the book, call your pastor, do the program, sign the sheet. That's all you gotta do is help them find the book and tell them to call their pastor. Uh, next slide. So five, we talk about youth leadership. Um, if you have not taken Trainer's Edge through your council, I strongly recommend this course. It goes over the EDGE method. Explain, demonstrate, guide, and enable. The most important word you will ever learn in scouting is the EDGE method. Uh, remember that we are youth-led, but we are adult mentored. And it is all too easy to fall into one or two traps where we are basically the third year of Weeblows or Lord of the Flies where the adults are running the program or the adults are missing in action. Um, these kids need us. If they already knew how to do it, they wouldn't be in Scouts. Um, we have to adapt how we respond to the youth let leadership and, and the EDGE method by the youth's ability. You have to be able to understand that no two bosons are the same. And a younger, less experienced bosun may need you to step backwards in the EDGE process and go back to the explain, demonstrate, and to perhaps do something for them the first time so they understand how it works. If you have an older, more experienced ship, you may be able to get somebody else to help them. So let's go to slide six. Um, training. In our ship, Sea Scout Adult Leadership uh, leader, leader Training is mandatory. I do not process your adult leadership application until you take this course. Because here's my opinion, this is a three hour course that doesn't require a whole lot of brain matter. It's not calculus. If you're not willing to commit to a three hour classroom or online course, then I don't know that I trust you to learn the skills necessary to take kids out on boat. <clears throat> um, encourage people to take wood badge and sea badge. Uh, wood badge to me is a, is a Kool-Aid course. It really gets these people enthusiastic 
they are steeped in the Boy Scout program, and then you take Sea Badge after that, and it provides a Sea Scout overlay to everything you learned in Wood Badge so that you can apply it in a very specific environment. Get your kids out there. Take National Youth Leadership Training. I cannot overemphasize this. I have seen a huge difference between an NYLT bosun and one who has not taken that course. And then push them forward through the continuum to go on to take NAIL or even better, SEAL. Um, so that they can bring those skills back and apply them in your ship. Um, don't be afraid to use technology at home. We like to ban cell phones. No, use them to your advantage. We use a program called Kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T um, dot, dot IT, um, get a Kahoot, and allows us to build these online quizzes, these trivia games that kids can earn points, and I, honestly, I reward them with ice cream. Um, and when you do go to training, wear your new century uniform or your whites. I don't actually ever wear my khakis to training. Why? Because a khaki uniform looks like every other tan shirt in Boy Scouts. You want to stand out. You want people to look at you at University of Scouting and say, what the heck is that uniform? Why are you wearing it? You're dressed like a Cub Scout. You're dressed like the Navy. You want them to ask questions. Let's go to number seven, which is how to be a BSA citizen. Go to Camp Aris. Uh, reach out to local Boy Scout troops and say, hey, I will take you sailing for free because you want that visibility. Too many people have never heard of the Sea Scout program nationally. So go to university, go to round table, go to powwow, wear your uniform, have your science fair display, have some videos, something like that, and, and preach the good news because this is an amazing program that people don't know about. <clears throat> um, don't neglect Cub Scouts. Um, a lot of people kind of make fun of Cub Scouts. I love Cub Scouts. They're great. They think we're so cool because we dress like them now. But the truth is, go out and do that rain god or regatta. Get involved because a Weeblo graduating is only three years away from being eligible for this program, and we need the visibility. So let's go to slide eight. Publicity. I swear to God, if one more person tells me Sea Scouts, I've never heard of Sea Scouts, I'm going to pull my hair out. We've been around since 1912, they should know about us. So get yourself a good website. There are a lot of them out there. They're free, WordPress, Google, um, and keep it updated. Nothing turns people away than a website that hasn't been updated since last year. They think you're a dead ship, they'll go away. Social media, know your audience and update weekly. If you're on Facebook, you're reaching parents. If you're on Instagram, you may be reaching youth. You will not reach youth through Facebook because they got off the day mom and dad got on. And when you post photos, for the love of God, no more kids lined up in front of a sign like they're facing a firing squad. Get out there. You want hands, you want faces, you want action shots. You want an intimate picture of your kids so people can get to know those kids. You know, you can have a few adults in the background. So they know that you're following Guide Safe Scouting, but they want to see the kids. Um, and get video. If you've got a, an Android or an iPhone, you've got a really powerful video camera, learn how to use iMovie, learn how to use Windows Movie Player, get your kids to teach you how to do it or to do it for you, more importantly. Get yourself a YouTube channel. People want to see you in action. If you were put on trial for being high adventure, the question is, is there enough evidence to convict you? So brand your ship. I'm not saying like cattle. We don't do that. God say scouting. But brand it. Have these patches. Have a website. Have a color scheme. Um, have when people see an image, they know that's your ship. Number nine. Um, this is your perseverance plan. It's a little bit weird, but surround, especially for new ships, surround your skipper with cheerleaders. There are more than enough parents out there in the world that are willing to tell your skipper what they did wrong. You need somebody whose only job is to tell them what they did right, because you have to accept that failure is inevitable. You will fail. But picking yourself back up, that's a choice. And the person who helps your skipper make that choice or helps your bosun make that choice is the person who is the designated cheerleader who says, you know what, that boat looks great. This was a fun program. Find the positive, the scout is cheerful. And lastly, remember that the Guide to Safe Scouting, most people don't know it. And they love to quote the Guide to Safe Scouting and find stuff 
not in there to beat you about the head and shoulders. It is not the great big book of no. The guide to safe scouting is a great big book of yes, okay? And you can do more than you think. So let's go to the last point, which is money. Um, last thing about this, we all know that a boat is a big hole in the water that we throw money into. So be honest about your budget, don't hide costs, but look at the whole program. Truth is, Sea Scouts can be less expensive than other programs. On our website, ship100.org, we actually laid it out side by side. And it turns out that Sea Scouts is cheaper by $150 a year than most Boy Scout programs. Why? Because I don't have to pay to take them to camp. I own the boats. And these New Century uniform shirts, they're cheap. And they wear like iron. Tell your parents this. Lastly, go out, get grants, scholarships, donors. Troll the back of Sail Magazine, Yachting Magazine, Boat US. Call those advertisers and say, hey, do you have any program for youth sailing? And are, are you willing to give me money? Because the worst they can do is say no. So to close up with our last slide, and I hope I'm on time, I'm talking as fast as I can, um, you know, take a chance. Go big or go home, folks. Um, and if you're not sure what makes a national flagship, do what we did. Go out, read those summaries. Look at what the national flagships have been doing for 10 years and say, don't ask, you know, don't ask why they're doing these things. Ask why you're not doing those. Because we really, in order to be high adventure, we've got, it's go big or go home, folks. Because anything worth doing is worth overdoing.